It's up on my heart when it skips a beat. Hello, my name is Musa and welcome to Frequency. This is a show where we talk about all sorts of music ranging from many different artists and genres. Put it like this, if the Brits was a latte, we'd be a flat white. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Frequency. This is the next segment of our show where we've been covering the Brit Awards. Uh, oh, firstly, uh, Drake has got a new Ferrari. Oh, Ferrari, Le Ferrari. Le Ferrari. Nice car. Yeah, thoughts Lovely on that? Nice car. It's a good little run around. I hear the mileage is good. Mileage? Mm. It wouldn't be economical, I'll tell you that. No. Car's a beast. But if you were to get like that car, you would probably die from that. Oh, yeah, yeah. But give it a couple of years, I'll be there. I'll be in Drake's car. Okay, okay. I will buy a statement. Drake. Well, you, better, you might as well give me a ride then. You better give me a ride. <laughs> well, be anyway, moving on to the Brit Awards. Uh, Human was the number one single for mm. this um, for this year. Interesting, I've not heard the song before. Really? No. Not heard the song? No. It was like a massive tune. Yeah, and I didn't even know what it was called. I, oh, even well. I haven't even heard of it. I thought it was quite a big thing. Yeah, but... But yeah I quite like the song. I think it's... Um, it's gone to have a really good reception. It's one of them films that could be used. Oh, one of them films. One of them songs that could be used in films really easily. Because yeah, it's, like, yeah, it's got a proper like, dramatic vibe to it. Yeah. So, moving on to our breakthrough artist. Mm -hmm. Chua Lee. Chua Lee part. Two syllables. Chua Lee part. Yeah, what about her? What do you think of her? What do you think, what do you think of her representation? Of her representation? Well, she's, she seems to have this kind of female empowerment thing going on, and yet she's very sexualized. Which I think kind of contradicts. I mean, how can you be saying, you know, female empowerment, and then when you kind of like all of them, it's just oh, well, maybe, maybe it goes into maybe but, it does. Work. But I think they're trying to sell records or even get hits on YouTube by using her body in a way. It, it's, it's like saying, well, yeah, it's a very because, big marketing tactic. Yeah, because it's, it's not just many, but women will look at that and say, oh, I'd love to have that. Do you see what I mean? Which is it, kind of a problem for young girls. Yes. Because they're going to be like, they're going to be looking at that. Feel like they have to do Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Feel like that's An the standard. An unrealistic expectation. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I understand fully. It's a very interesting point there, but... Right, okay, moving on. <laughs> British, British artist of the year was Stormzy. I think he's getting way too big for his boots, I've got to say. Ah, like he did there, like he did there. Moving on. International artist was Kendrick Lamar, mm. who you like to refer to as just Lamar, which is very funny. One of the best lyricists of the 21st century. I don't know if I completely agree with that. I mean, he's okay, yeah, but he's not my sort of thing, if you see what I mean. He's got a strange voice, hasn't he? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the way it's like, it's not hardcore, but it's not like pop. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Now on to our correspondent, Alatina, and she'll be conducting interviews with uh, upcoming music artists. Hello, we're going to be interviewing Leo today as part of our show. How are you today, Leo? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Fine, thanks, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to talk about your music. So, when and why did you start? Well, I started about three years ago because I was listening to a lot of guitar-based music and I just couldn't get enough of it. And it got a point which I had to start doing something more practical about it, really. Brilliant. That's a great goal, yeah. Um, so what musicians would you say inspire you? Uh, it was mainly Kurt Cobain at the time, because I really got into the Nirvana and their guitar sound. That and Metallica. I was loving all the Metallica stuff. Metallica's brilliant. Yeah. Um, so what, what genre of music would you say you would most inspired by? Uh, I'd say mainly uh, alternative rock like Nirvana and Foo Fighters and so on. Because Foo Fighters is my favorite band for a good time. I've listened to every single one of their albums. It's hard to think about them. Um, so what's, what's your end goal, would you say? I'd say my end goal would to help produce an album to be fairly successful and have work that I've written on it that just would be, I um, could be able to be proud of it, really. Great. Yeah, um, uh, sorry, um, what, what, I mean, what's your relationship with music? It's a very love-hate relationship, because I find it quite emotional. It's either, oh, I love this song, or I'll be 
crying in the corner very quietly. It's um, very love hate, really. Yeah, yeah, kind of music has a range of emotions, doesn't it? Mm. Um, so, how, how often do you perform and where? Um, it's normally about once a week. We try to aim for the weekend, like um, this Sunday we've got, uh, we've got a gig in the Fairycroft House at Seth and Walden for about 6 p.m. onwards. Um, yeah, it's good fun. I hope it goes well for you, yeah. Yeah, so uh, thank you everybody, thanks for watching, thank you for talking to me. Uh, goodbye. Now on to the Oscars. So Dunkirk was a film that features a quite famous composer, Hans Zimmer, who's done music for many films, most famously the Batman trilogy and uh, Interstellar. That's coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, he did that as well? Yeah. Okay. Inception. So I haven't seen Dunkirk, but I may watch it just on the fact that he's a composer for that film, since mm -hmm. I like his, com his music very much. It's a very good score, Dunkirk. Mm -hmm. It's very good. It wraps up the tension really well. Right. So um, Star Wars was composed by uh, John Williams. Mm, the Good. master. Good. He's been on it for years and he's the best. Okay, then we leave that. So he does nearly every Star Wars movie? Yeah, he's done every Star Wars movie, every Spielberg movie, like Indiana Jones and that sort of stuff with him, and the original Superman soundtrack, among others. Okay. Um, Alexandra Desplat. I think it's Alexandra Desplat. Desplat. I think. As right. Desplat. Shape of Water. I hear so much about this movie, I've got no clue what it's about. Well, I mean, I, I haven't seen it, but I think the basic thing is woman falls in love with fish. Is it? Yeah. What does she do with the fish? I don't know what she does with it, but she's like a cleaner in like a laboratory, and there's this fish man. She's not actually... And she falls oh, in love with, with, with the fish man. With the fish man. What do you, what, is he actually like half fish or something? Yeah, well, he's like total fish, but he's shaped like a man, I think, anyway. You're joking. I'm not joking, that's the film. It won Oscars and everything. There's a fish. There's a... He's a fish man. He looks like a fish, but he's a, he's like he's shaped like a man. But he looks like a fish, so he's a fish is man. Is he either a fish or a man? Like, I think he's a bit of both. Well, how does that even work? Well, don't ask me. I'm is not it, a scientist. Is it, is it supposed to be a comedy? Um, no, I think it's a drama. I believe. Yeah. Hi. Today uh, we're going to be interviewing Pilgrim, a really cool upcoming R&B and hip hop trip hop artist. How are you today, Pilgrim? I'm alright, thank you. Yeah. Great. So, so what, what influences your music, would you say? What influences my music is probably how I'm feeling that day. Um, people that I hang around with, you know, just um, how I'm particularly feeling when I've, you know, put the pen to the pad, you know, or what, when I'm trying to make an instrumental. It's just how I'm generally feeling, really. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's brilliant that we can all have that outlet in some way of um, expressing ourselves. And yeah. I have that person as well. Have that little musician. escape. Yeah. So, uh, what, what musicians inspire you, would you say? When it comes to inspiration, you know, I'm all over the shop, really. Um, I've got inspiration from psychedelic rock with Pink Floyd to um, to um, trip pop um, with Kendrick Lamar, you know. So, yeah, I'm quite all over the place, really. It's fantastic. I, I love Pink Floyd. I love um, Another Brick on the Wall. That's yeah. a really fantastic song. It's an inspiration yeah. to me as you well. Watch the film. Yeah, it's a fantastic film as well. Um, what, what's, so, what, what do you hope to achieve with, with your music career then, Pilgrim? Um, I just want to uh, make my vision reality, really, like everybody else does. Um, um, I haven't got a big goal, but I'd just like to be happy, and I'd like at least if I can make somebody um, in a good mood when they're listening head bottom to my track, you know, that's an achievement to me, you know. Great. So, yeah. That's really great. Um, so, um, when and why did you did you start music? Um, my friends all started grabbing a pen and a pad and writing down lyrics, and I just got involved as well, and I really loved it. A little word play, and I just got excited about this one little sentence that you know was mucking around like a word play with similars and um, with um, what do you call them? Oh, metaphors, you know. And I used yeah. to just get so excited, and it just sort of led to us um, going a little open mics and that. And I just wanted to progress and take that forward, really. Fantastic. Yeah. Recently you created a really interesting music video. Would you be able to tell us a little bit more about what the song's about? Yeah, Zone Out of the Clones about um, just um, people need to get stuck out of their vision. Um, the, um, like the, the, the vision of watching TVs and well, black mirrors, you know, because they're stopping you from actually living your life. It's, you know, like people are just so 
uh, miraged from all this fantasy and all this force-fed rubbish news, you know. You need to start living it up yourself and not um, seeing other people's eyes. Yeah. Yeah, it's very true, you know, in life today, uh, people are kind of glued to technology a lot and they yeah. don't see real life. It's is really it. true. Um, so, um, yeah, I think, I, think, um, I think we've finished. Thank you cool. very much for listening. It's been nice to meet you, Pilgrim. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Right, so some very interesting conversation there. On another interesting note, uh, Donald Glover has uh, opened up about uh, the music industry, stating that nobody has good intentions. Not surprising to me, considering the fact that most industries these days have a very ruthless attitude around business, uh, of course, revolving entirely around money, generally. Uh, he stated that he wants to really stop music, uh, stating that his late, latest project on his stage in Childish Gambino will be his last. Um, now, the star has spoken about his experiences, uh, explaining his disenchantment, in fact, from the music industry. In fact, entertainment in general. Uh, Glover says before my first album came out, he actually came into the industry with good intentions. He wanted people to like him and he, um, he realised that his intentions were not shared by many others and that left him very quickly. Um, I think this is very important to notice and a good note and a good uh, lesson for Donald Glover. Um, reminding us that uh, at the end of the day, does it all really matter? How good music is, how good someone's creative outlet is, or is it just really the end of the day, like everything else about money? So I will leave you that on that note, and um, thank you very much for joining us for Frequency, and uh, until next time, thank you.